I don't think it's too unfair to say that Intel's last couple of CPU generations have been a little lackluster at best and just straight up boring at worst. Compared to the last couple of Ryzen generations, it just felt like Intel was trying to play catch up while not really bringing anything all that new to the table. Which is why I didn't board the hype train when rumors about Intel's 12th gen chips started floating around. In fact, I never even bought a ticket. But now that they're here, and I've had some time to play around with it, I might have some regrets about not getting on board. And that's because in this review we'll be taking a look at the Core i5-12400, along with MSI's new B660M mortar, and a kit of Kingston's Fury Beast DDR5 modules, and spoiler alert, Intel's new platform is legitimately impressive. And if by the end of this video you feel like picking up any of those parts, or anything else for that matter, and want to help the channel while you're at it, feel free to do it via my Amazon affiliate links in the description down below. Now, I assume that if you're watching this video, then you might already have a pretty good idea of what Intel's 12th gen is all about. But even so, it's probably worth taking another quick look. Now obviously the headliner is that the higher end chips in the 12th gen lineup break the desktop CPU mold a little by featuring both performance and efficiency cores. This means that they have a set of cores dedicated to handling intensive tasks like gaming or creative work, and a whole other set of cores focused on handling less intensive stuff like background tasks and lending a hand when it comes down to multi-threading tasks like rendering. All managed by Intel's built-in thread director that tells all the little cores what to do. Along with that, the Alder Lake chips also feature support for the new DDR5 standard and DDR4 depending on what motherboard you decide to go with, support for Wi-Fi 6E, and just as I'm getting used to PCIe 4.0, they herald the arrival of PCIe Gen 5. While cool new features and innovations are, well, cool, the most important and exciting improvement to me at least is that the new performance cores are, according to Intel, their highest performing CPU cores ever, which largely means a very healthy IPC or instructions per clock boost. And that boost is the real hero of the show when it comes to the 12400, since while it does ship with basically all of the other cool features of the higher end chips, it only has P cores and no E cores, six of them to be exact and with hyper-threading enabled, so 12 threads in total. The 12400 is rated for a base clock speed of 2.5 GHz with a max server frequency of 4.4 GHz, which might not seem all that impressive with a lot of the competition including Intel's own lineup sporting 5 GHz plus speeds, but as we'll see in the benchmarks, raw clock speed is not the only thing to look out for. The chip also has 18 MB of L3 cache, has a base power draw of 65 watts, and a maximum turbo power draw of 117 watts. It supports up to 128 gigs of memory and features native support for DDR4 up to 3200 mega transfers per second or DDR5 up to 4800 mega transfers per second, though obviously you can clock them much higher than that with overclocking. Like I already mentioned, the new 12th gen chips support PCIe 4.0 and 5.0 and the chip itself is equipped with 20 lanes with more lanes coming from whatever motherboard chipset you decide to go with. As for the chip's integrated graphics, you're probably not going to be blown away by the UHD 730. It's a decent iGPU that'll get you by for most tasks, and it'll always come in handy for troubleshooting, but you're definitely not going to want to game on it, as we'll see when we get to the benchmarks. The last and undoubtedly one of the most exciting specs to note here is pricing, since that's where I think the 12400 really shines. The chip starts at around $192 and is currently selling for about $209 or 3,500 Rand here in South Africa, which puts it at $84 cheaper than AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X and around $12 cheaper than the 5600G, which saw some really big price drops after Intel's 12th gen chips actually launched. So thanks, Intel. This pricing could make the Core i5-12400 one of the most disruptive chips we've seen from Intel in a good long while, if it performs as well as they claim it does, of course. Now. Before we see whether it does just that, we should also take a quick look at two of the other new parts we'll be using in this review since we're dealing with an entirely new platform over here. First up is 32 gigabytes of Kingston's new Fury Beast DDR5 modules, and this specific kit clocks in at a mind-melting 5200 MHz with the CL40 timings, and it looks pretty slick in a minimalist gamer kind of way. I won't get too stuck in the finer details because I don't want to, but some of the key advantages coming from DDR5 include higher capacities, lower power draw, including like an integrated power management system built right into the modules themselves, 
and obviously faster data transfer rates. Unfortunately, because DDR5 is still fresh on the scene, latencies are pretty high compared to DDR4, but that will change as the standard matures. Now, as I mentioned before, the board we'll be slotting everything into is of the B660 variety, or more specifically, the DDR5 version of MSI's new MAG B660M mortar Wi-Fi. The M there meaning that it's a micro ATX boy. The B660 chipset is a great match for the 12400 as neither the CPU nor the chipset are unlocked for overclocking. And with it being a more mid-range kind of chipset, like compared to the more expensive Z690, pricing should be much more reasonable too. And more reasonable it is, with the B660M Mortar Wi-Fi DDR5 board landing around the $180 to $190 range. The board should also be more than capable of pushing our 12400 as fast as she'll go thanks to a robust 12 plus 1 plus 1 VRM configuration, and an equally capable set of hefty heat sinks to keep temps in check too. Okay, so now that we're all a little more informed about Intel's new platform, let's throw it all together and see what it's got under the hood. Now, along with the motherboard and RAM we just looked at, I also used MSI's MAG Core Liquid 360R to cool the 12400, a Gen 4 M.2 as our main drive, MSI's RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio, and Antec's 750W EAG Pro to power all of the things. So, let's get started. And to kick things off, we've got a couple of productivity benchmarks to take a look at. An area where I kind of expected to see the 12400 fall behind significantly, considering I only had 8 core parts to compare it to and full behind it does. But surprisingly, not as much as I expected. In Cinebench R23's multi-threaded tests, the 12400 put up a good fight, landing relatively close to the 3800XC score, a chip with four more threads to work with. Not bad at all. But when we switch gears to the more single-threaded tests, the 12400 breaks into its stride easily handing out L's to all of the other chips tested, and putting up the highest score I've ever personally gotten. Unfortunately for the 12400, the rest of the productivity benchmarks are all more or less focused on multi-threaded performance, and just like the multi-tests in Cinebench, the 12400 falters here too, posting slower render times and lower scores than the rest of the stack across the board. But again, that's to be expected. No matter how fast Intel's new performance cores are, we can expect them to properly compete with chips that heavily outnumber it with cores and threads, even though it does still put up a very good fight. I'm sure if I was able to get one of AMD's or Intel's own previous Gen 6 core chips for benchmarking, this would have been a hell of a lot of a closer race. Moving on to gaming benchmarks, we see a much closer race already in Unigen Superposition benchmark with all the chips managing very similar scores but with the 12400 still losing out to the 8 core parts. Something we see play out again in 3 March Time Spy benchmark, where the 12400 posted a significantly lower score than the rest of the chips tested. If you've ever run these benchmarks yourself, that shouldn't be all that surprising considering that both do tend to favor chips with higher core counts as well as raw single thread performance. When it comes to actual games that we can actually play though, we start to see a different story unfolding. In the majority of the games I tested, the 12400 easily and happily trades blows with its higher core count and significantly more expensive competition, including the 5800X, which is no small feat. This holds true for both average and 1% low numbers, and it's all just impressive stuff. But not as impressive as it scores in games like Hitman 3, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Forza Horizon 5, and Far Cry New Dawn where the 12400 came very close to just straight up embarrassing the competition from both AMD and Intel's own 11700K. It does still falter in one or two titles like Cyberpunk 2077, where it landed on the bottom of the scoreboard, but even then it was only by a handful of frames and it looks like the exception rather than the rule. In case you weren't paying attention, these numbers show that the 12400 is one hell of a little gaming CPU even with its lower core count compared to the rest of the competition and its locked clock speed. Some of that gaming prowess also likely comes down to the kit of Fury Beast DDR5 memory it's paired with, but from what I've seen from other benchmarks online, the current stack of DDR5 performs around the same if not only slightly better than something like the 3600MHz CL16 DDR4 kit used in my other systems. The 12400 also proved to be one of the most efficient and cool under pressure chips I've looked at in a long time. Even under heavy load, the kind you'll almost never encounter if you're just gaming, 
the chip only maxed out at a total power draw of 107 watts and maxed out at just 69 degrees. Nice. And not to be outdone by the 12400, MSI's V660 M mortar also easily managed to beat the heat too, with VRM temps never going higher than 45 degrees. Now earlier I mentioned that while the 12400 does come equipped with a great iGPU for general purpose use, you shouldn't expect a game on it. At least not if you want to actually enjoy doing it. And that's because even though I've only just started recording benchmarks for iGPUs, so don't really have anything to compare it to, the UHD 730 just doesn't have the horsepower to provide a passable gaming experience, unless you count Rocket League, which runs on almost anything. In all of the games I tested, even at 720p, with all quality settings nuked, the iGPU had no chance of sticking to even a consistent 30 FPS. But that's to be expected, and an iGPU, regardless of its gaming capabilities, is still a nice to have if you do ever find yourself without a dedicated graphics card. So with all of that wrapped up, is Intel's new Core i5-12400 worth your time? Absolutely. If you want a gaming chip that can duke it out with some of the best around, that runs cool and sips power for a desktop chip anyway, enables cool new features like PCIe 5.0, DDR5 and Wi-Fi 6E, and to top it all off comes in at a legitimately disruptive price, then it's kind of a no-brainer. And I only say kind of there because you'll also have to add the cost of like a new motherboard on top of the cost of the 12400, which does knock a point or two off its value proposition, when compared to Ryzen users who can essentially just like drop a 5600G or X into their boards and get about reasonably close to the same level of performance. But then again, I'm betting most of you watching this video are planning a whole new build around the 12400 in which case you can't really do much better than this at this price range right now, at least until we see what AMD's next gen is going to bring to the table later this year. And that's all folks, hit the like button if this video was any good, get subscribed for more, and let me know in the comments down below whether you're jumping on board the 12th gen hype train, or are you patiently waiting to see what AMD comes up with. And remember to buy all the things using my affiliate links in the description down below to support the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.